morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. That's right. Circuits like freeways. It's a hyper-connected world that we're going to experience ahead of us. Information will be moving smartly, decentralized. It will take the action it needs to take at the right time. According to the World Economic Forum, in 2015, the tipping point where 10% of all the cars in the US will be driverless, where 10% of all the clothes will be connected to the internet, where there will be the first robotic pharmacist, it's not that far away. It's 2025. It's only a few rounds around the sun ahead. It's happening. Think about all those connections that over a trillion of sensor services and device will broker to each other with human, with things. Think about the complexity of the system. But really, services are not enough. Services are not giving value unless they're connected. Connection becomes meaningful. So let's go and see inside one of those connections. Let's see a story behind those connections. How many of you took a flight to be here today? Wow. So let's imagine it's 2030. You are on your self-driving cars to the airports. The cars is doing already the pre-check-in flight. You take off on time. Everything is great. During your mid-flight, coming back to San Francisco from Singapore, your child at home gets sick. Fever is rising sharply. Mattress and clothes detect that fever is going up really quickly. And they immediately try to alert you. But you are on the plane, mid-flight. And the in-flight Wi-Fi doesn't work, not even 10 years from now. <laughs> so what's happened? The smart system of your house reroute that request to a humanoid nanny. The humanoid nanny prints a 3D serializer medicine, and the fever goes away. By the time you land, if you finally get connected, you get full auditing logs of all that happened while you were away. Your child got cured. The right things happened even if you couldn't be there. And that's the future. But as I said before, it's not that far off. So let's go and see today how one of the most innovative companies in the world, in the pharma industry, it's already making that future a reality. Please welcome on stage Dean, Director of Software Engineering, from GSK. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Tell us about the vision of, of GSK. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate you asking that. I mean, if you think about the, you know, what Agi just mentioned, uh, there is a, the solution to healthcare is really data flowing, right? That is it. How can we get data from patients to flow directly to people who are preparing the solutions and back to the doctors so that we can have personalized solutions and non-generics. And truly, it's a data flow problem. And, and what are, how you are, how you're accelerating the, the pharma to market? How are you connecting humans with, with the machines? 
how that's happening? Definitely, we are building out a global grid right now across the globe, we're a global pharma, and we have different endpoints. Internally, we're transforming how we flow data, and then we're connecting that back into the ecosystem of healthcare outside of our company so that this data can be readily available and we're using Kong to secure those nodes and protect those global intersections across uh, our network. And that's a very highly regulated industry, right? Very regulated, tons of rules. In order to do this, we have to have security uh, and compliance at the forefront of what we're doing. And we use Kong and automation to ensure that while we're doing this and while we have people's private data, this data is secure. Uh, only people that need to have access to it have access to it and all the right systems can connect and provide the solutions they need. And, and let's zoom into one of those use cases. Let's the zoom into the technical aspect yeah, definitely. There was a, a problem that we faced in our global company where we simply wanted to identify the folks in this regulated space who had specific expertise, say in privacy law, right? How do we find the person that has the right expertise in privacy law for this right case? And that was very difficult to do. We have a search engine that we've exposed using an API and secured by Kong, and this search engine processes and indexes 200 terabytes of data daily. And we were able to take uh, the data that's processed, including, most interestingly, the uh, conversations happening within the company. So you think, if you're talking about privacy law on our collaboration sites and networks, if every time this question comes up, you have the insights and you belong to the privacy law department, then most likely you're the most relevant expert that can help us with this problem right now. Finding the right person used to take weeks, sometimes months, just understanding, calling around, and setting up meetings. Now with this capability, we're able to connect people within our company instantly and speed up the process of development to getting solutions out to the world. Thank you, That's, it's really exciting to, to help you innovate, bring therapies to market faster. It's structured to have a, a customer like you. Awesome, thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Thank sure. you. So this is a live example of really what, what it means when we're powering connections. Uh, what, how much is going behind the scene? This is just one API processing 200 terabytes per data of very important information. This is really building for a new era. Voice will be the primary interface of the future, will be the UI of the future. So as an architect, as an engineer, you have to think of how we can build the best system to support voice as an interface of the future, what we need to do to be ready for that future. This new era creates many new challenges, but I will focus primarily on three. Let's talk about the evolutions of, of data. They can be in three states, in use, at rest, or in motion. And data in use is really how it all started. Building application to move humanity forward, make us more productive, take use of that business logic, and get value out of it. Then we got the big data the data warehousing, the data lakes. And we wanted to become smarter by using this massive amount of data. And then there was this data in motion state. And the reality is, it's never been that important because there wasn't much to move for a long time. But this is where the 21st century challenges are going to be. How do we move data? how we manage it, how we secure it. This is where most of the data will leave. We will always be moving. That's when they are valuable. You talk with your voice Alexa device, goes and retrieves information and comes back. By the time Alexa did speak, the information is not valuable anymore. 
this real-time information moving is where most of the data will be in. And just a quick data, it grew 40 times data proliferation just in the last 10 years. It's the fastest growing segment in, in data. And this is number one. Number two, we're living into a decentralized world. There is multi-cloud platforms, data centers. We're going from 300 data centers in 2016 to 650 hyperscale data centers in 2021. But interesting is, look at where the energy consumption of the world is going. 20% of all their energy is getting consumed from 2020 from decentralized data centers. It's a massive explosion. And really, this is also so many different protocols. So it's also decentralized as in the way we proxy information is not just one protocol. It's not just HTTP. It's many more. Number three, I think, as we saw earlier, the information has to be smart, has to make the right decision at the right time where you can't be there. There is so much information moving that we won't be able to wait for us to take action. The CPU power is increasing sharply. And where it's going to get adopted the most, it will be in the data in motions to make smart routing and getting delivered at the right place at the right time. It's like water. You want it anytime, anywhere, and not think about it. It just works. So how you build this? Are you ready? Are your system ready? It's coming up fast, as we hear from GSK. Are you ready to build this? So what you really need, it's one grid, one system that connects the dots and moves in a smartly way so you don't have to think about it. Well, what happened in, uh, in software it's really happening in nature. How we're built inside as humans, we have a nervous system, right? And we have the central nervous system, the brain and the spine. And then we have the peripheral nervous system, which goes all over to the body on a request response life cycle, which is very similar to an API life cycle. And we have to build our companies powered like our own nervous system to become smarter, to move fast, to get data to our customer, to our partner, to our family, the right place, right time. So last year, we productized this concept and we introduced the service control platform. And the service control platform, it's one unified way to control and broker all the information going back from legacy system all the way to serverless, running on containers or not. Is that nervous system productized? This year, we turn it full life cycle. What it means? Well, let's look at the cores. You need interceptor of traffic. You need those interceptors to be everywhere, at the edge, on your device, in your data centers, in the system read 25 years ago. You need interceptor everywhere. They proxy any protocol, any information, in and out. Once you have those interceptors, then you can go around and you can help build, run, and automate your nervous system. So you can have 
pre-production tooling, production tooling, and post-production tooling. Full life cycle. In the pre-productions, when you're building your nervous system, of course, you need to design, you need to mock, you need to test, you need to manage, you need to publish, you need to make that information smarter, intelligent, and also secure in a different way on how we did before. So over today and tomorrow, we're going to unveil a lot of exciting products to help you designing, run, and automate your system and your information, starting with the data planes. This is to help you, really help you, accelerate empowering those connections. And ultimately, it's not even powering connection. It's about powering connections that matter. Thank you.